There's a lot of notation in statistics that look similar, like y, y bar, or y hat. And in this video, I'll briefly explain the difference between them and how it's used. So suppose y is somebody's SAT score. So suppose y is just somebody's SAT score. And our goal is just to predict SAT scores. So yi is just individual i's SAT score. So y1, y2, y3, those are just the first, second, third person's SAT score. All right, y bar then is just the average SAT score in your sample. So that's just the average SAT score. So now, if I were to just say, hey, here's a randomly selected person, what do you think their SAT score is? Predict it. The best guess you have is just Y bar. That's really all you can do with no other information. But what if you had some other information? What if you also knew how many hours they studied for? Let's say we also have that variable. Let's call it X. S is, X is the number of hours that you studied, hours studied for the SAT. Now, if we make a little scatter plot where X is the number of hours studied and Y is the SAT score, we're now going to have a bunch of data points. So let's say we now actually have people's SAT scores and how many hours they studied. Notice each data point here is a person. Each data point here is a specific person, a specific individual eyes SAT score, and that person's hours of study, right? So there, that's just that specific person's values. So that's like yi is each data point. It's like y1, y2, y3, depending on the person. So now when we do what's called regression analysis, and we'll turn this into an mx plus b, which the notation for that fancy mx plus b is this. It's that y, not our actual SAT score, but the prediction of the SAT score, is beta zero plus beta one x. And that is gonna look like a straight line with a slope of beta one and an intercept of beta zero. So this intercept is beta zero, the slope is beta one. And so here y hat is that mx plus b, that beta zero plus beta one x. And now if I were to ask you to predict the SAT score, of somebody who specifically studied for three hours. So now you can look at three hours and you can look at what the line actually says, the line predicts, and that is the Y hat for that person. Now this Y hat is hopefully gonna be a lot more accurate of a prediction than just guessing Y bar for everybody like you had to do when you weren't given any other information, right? You just said the average SAT score of it's 1300, uh, then you're just gonna say, all right, I think that's the average SAT score in this sample. So that's the prediction for this person. But let's say if they studied for three hours now, let's say the line says that their prediction is actually more like 1100. Well, then that tells you uh, that this might be a little bit more accurate. But of course, how accurate it is, is based on the actual person. And that person might be somewhere like here if that person who studied for three hours actually got a little bit more or a little bit less, that's their actual yi. So the gap between the yi and the y hat is called the residual. So let's then write here the residual, often notated as e, and sometimes called u. So e hat, u hat, that's notation for the residual, is just your, your actual value minus the lines, the predicted value for you. So that gap is the residual. And notice that the residuals could either be positive or negative. If you're above, then it's positive residuals. If you're below, then it's negative residuals. The res residuals all add up to zero, by the way. So these all will always cancel with these. And the last thing I'll say is this, is often what we use to measure how good a regression is, like the goodness of fit, is we look at how our y hat performs compared to just using y bar. So remember, the first thing I said was, if you had to predict SAT scores based on no information at all, you would just guess this. You would just guess uh, y bar, which means the sum of squared residuals in that case is, all right, 
each person minus your guess for them average, that's a residual. We'll square them just so that the negatives and positives don't cancel each other out. That way all the residuals are positive. That way we're really capturing the magnitude, how far off is your guess of y bar from their actual thing. If you add them all up, this is basically how good uh, you did when you had no information. But ideally, when you have your actual regression line, you have some actual other information like the hour studied, you won't capture it perfectly, but you will do a little bit better. So the goal is to see how much lower this is than this. So basically, and that's where there's like a formula for r squared, I won't write it out here, but just know the intuition behind that formula is all about comparing this guy to this guy. Ideally, the lower this is, the better you've done, right? So this is, the lower this is, the lower the better. And you wouldn't ever do worse than just guessing the y bar. I mean, you always have the option, if you were creating a regression line, you always have the option to just guess, all right, I'm just gonna guess the average, if that's really the best thing to do. Uh, but, so you wanna improve on that. So this, how much you've improved on that is what R squared is looking at.